Hi, this presentation is on the different types of graphs and tables, uh, the key features in each of those, and how you read them, as well as some hints on when to use the various graphs and tables in um, science and chemistry. All right, so to review just a little bit, you have um, in any graph that looks like this with two axes, you have an X and a Y. The X axis is the line on a graph that runs horizontally, left to right, through zero, and the Y axis is the line on the graph that runs vertically up and down through zero. Now, most of the time that you have um, experienced a graph, you've always had zero, zero as the point where the intersection occurs. You don't need to have zero, zero as the place where the X and the Y cross. We can work with, um, as long as you have a uniform scale, you can change where the X and the Y cross. So our first chart that we're going to look at is a pie chart. And in this pie chart, you can see the various color-coded areas that represent the, um, the, different, the five different things that are reported there. A pie chart shows slices um, to describe the relative sizes of the data. A pie chart is circular and it's divided into sectors and each sector has um, a relative size depending on the value. So for instance here in the blue the soccer is 30 percent which is the biggest area of all these five sports and gymnastics is um, I'm guessing this this light yellow over here and it's 11 so it should be smaller than the soccer. Uh, hold on one second and I'll show you an example of some Here's how we could make a pie chart. You have your three, five, two, three, and seven of the favorite games. So you would add them up and you would have um, the total number of votes and you could then compare the Call of Duty three votes for the whole, however many you have, uh, which looks like it's 20, so three out of 20, and you would figure out the percentage for that particular game and then you would, you would decide where the wedges go and color it. Um, you will need a title for your graph and you need to have a key for a pie graph. Alright, so the next graph would be a bar graph. A bar graph is also known as a bar chart and it is a vertical display or horizontal depending on which axis you label them on showing different heights of the different substances that you're comparing. It's a really good way to show relative sizes. We can see which type of movie you're most liked or which were least liked at a glance. These are probably easier to see than a um, pie graph. Some key features Uh, key features in a bar graph would be a title, the data, scale, data labels, and an X and a Y axis. So we have labels here on the side of dollars and we have people. We also have um, a scale going up the side. Each segment is numbered and has the same unit um, difference. You have your labels across the bottom and you can see that these are all well labeled and well marked. Okay. If you have multiple colors you would want to make sure that you had a key to indicate what they were. A line graph is a graph that shows information that is connected in some way such as change over time. You can show multiple lines on a line graph. In this example we have a title, we have um, a left and a right axis, we have labels on both of those. You want to have a scale if you're dealing with numbers. You need to have um, your data points. You need to have, usually you have a line. Sometimes it is segmented like this one is. Sometimes it's a straight line. It depends on what you're looking for. A scatter plot is a graph with plotted points showing a relationship between those two sets of data. Now remember your X and your Y um, using your Cartesian coordinates. Um, you go over a number and up a number depending on what the values are. So in this example we can see that the time, I'm sorry, the temperature on the bottom scale and the dollars on the side, this one is, um, it looks like it is warmer weather leads to more sales but the relationship isn't perfect. You can see that sometimes you have a, a point that's not quite in the exact scheme. But you can see that as the temperature increased, the money increased. So you can make a relationship. All right. 
sometimes when you do a scatter plot, you are asked to include a best fit straight line or a line of best fit. Sometimes this is called a trend line on your scatter plot. So the goal here is to take a ruler and find the average. So you would take the ruler and you would generate a line that represents the overall average of the data plotted. So you, when you're drawing one by hand, you try to have the line as close to as possible, uh, as close to as many of the points as you possibly can. And you also try to have the same number of points above as below. In this example, there's a lot of points. Um, if you're doing a best fit line on the computer, the computer does it for you. If you're doing it by hand, you need to try and go up the middle or down the middle, whichever direction the data is, is showing. Then you can do some things with your scatter plot and your best fit straight line. You can either interpolate or extrapolate, and they're a little bit different. An interpolation is where we find the value inside our data points. For instance, in that line that we drew for the temperature versus money, if we were asked to find what is the um, approximate value of money generated when it's 21 degrees, we would go 21 up to the line and then we would interpolate it across to the amount of dollars that that point on that line would estimate. So this is an estimation. Extrapolation is also an estimation, but this is outside of our set of data. So this would be taking our line and extending it. We would lay the ruler down and we would extend it past where the data is. And if we were extending it to 29 degrees, which is not on our original graph, if we were to extend it to 29 degrees, go up to the extended line and across to the amount of money, we could predict that at 29 degrees, you should maybe make $750. So this is outside of the values plotted. So let's look at a summary of what graphs to use when. All right, so what graph should you use when? A line graph is good to track and display trends over periods of time. These are better than bar graphs for small intervals. Pie charts are good when you're looking at the parts of a whole. Bar graphs are good to compare data that is between different parties or groups. It can be okay to track data changes or changes, but it's best when you, when the changes are drastic. Area graphs, X and Y scatter plots. These are um, X and Y plots or scattergrams or scatter plots are used to determine if a relationship belongs to different things. We can look to see if it's a direct relationship or an indirect relationship, which leads us to direct proportions and indirect proportion. When something is directly proportional, it means that you have two variables, and if one variable increases, the other increases. If one variable goes down, the other goes down. So this is directly proportional. Um, there's a symbol for proportional. It is that open-ended um, infinity looking sign. It's saying that y is proportional to x. So this would mean that as y increases, x increases or if as y decreases, x decreases. In a direct proportional graph, you can see a straight line. It might be pointing up or it might be pointing down, depending on which way you're looking at it. Okay, Here's some data that shows you that um, mass and volume of aluminum are directly proportional. Inverse proportions, the when they're inversely proportional, also known as indirect, means that if one variable goes up, the other variable goes down, okay? Indirect doesn't mean that there's no relationship and it's random. Indirect means that if you increase one variable, the other variable will decrease. Here is an example. This one is a curve. You can see a, a line. So as I increase my pressure, my volume decreases. This is inversely proportional or indirect. Okay, two more charts. Timelines. Timelines show information in chronological order and they include um, a date, a title, and an explanation for the event. So you can't just label on a date. You do need to explain maybe a little bit of what's there. Um, you can see events in the life of Benjamin Franklin here. You can see when he was born, when he dies, some of the different major accomplishments in his life. And then a table. When you report a table in a um, report, you need to have a title, you need to have labels, and you need to have units and data. So it's not okay just to have numbers. You would either have to, in the top of the column, label that it's centimeters or um, moles. 
whatever it is. You need to have either the units in a box, which is not necessarily a, a good idea, but rather the units at the, the top of the column. So this means that all of these values here are centimeters. Okay. Having a title for the table is important too, even if it's just table one. That way you can reference it later. All right, so if you have any questions on when to use various graphs, what involve, what's involved in a correct graph, please come back and reference this uh, tutorial.